Welcome everyone to the 2016 Duck Commander 500 at Texas Race Review where I recap what went on before the race, during the race, and after the race looking ahead to the following race. So my overall thoughts on this race is uh, blah. Side by side racing and passing was very limited and, th and those two things combined in my opinion made uh, Texas, this past race at Texas, the worst race so far this season. And it's so far mostly been a season of uh, many memorable modes in, in good in good racing. But Texas was not one of those races, uh, and and it also continues to to dr drive the point that I think Texas does not need two races. Uh, I think it's better off with one day. And heck, maybe in the future. But but I think uh, Texas is going to have. Uh, two races, and I think both of them should be 400 mile races. Um, you know, because in a way, this race just kind of had like a feeling of like, ah, it's taking forever. Uh, it was certainly a long night for sure. One of the reasons why I think cyber side racing and passing was limited was because of it was because of it being a night race. In my, in my opinion, I think that because uh, because. When races are under the lights, especially at high speed arrows into the racetracks, um, the track is, the temperature is cool, and um, there's more grip on the racetrack, so there isn't a whole lot of slipping and sliding uh, going on. And the more slipping and sliding you have, uh, and the more control it is in the driver's hands, that's what leads to better racing. Because it was um, night and cold due to rain earlier uh, that day. I think that that's what that's what led to limited side by side racing and passing. Um, most of the drivers hu hugged the bottom, and, and and only a few drivers w w was really w were really able to make passes up high. Um, and, and I think that that's also confusing to me because Texas Motor Speedway it, it was last repaved in two thousand two, um, and so it, so it actually has one of the older oldest services in NASCAR right now, I believe. And so uh, and, and so to have uh, Lack of service and racing and passing was very baffling to me because old services because old services tend to have better racing. Uh, I had to cut that because I lost my thoughts. But one thing that I did like uh, about uh, last night's race was uh, the amount of tire where, where we saw tires meant a lot at Texas. So Texas it, it, over, over the last few years ha has become a lot like consistent track in Atlanta when it comes to tire wear, and in the latter stages of, of that race, it led to some very interesting strategies. And and in the end, Kyle Busch and the rest of the 18 team uh, ma made the perfect strategy to take four tires with about what 50 40 laps to go, and then, and, and end up getting them out front. Uh, and, from, and, from, and from there, it was smooth sailing ahead for Kyle Busch, and he went on to win back to back uh, races. Uh, I do not think that Kyle Busch had the best car, though. I expect Kyle Busch to be one of the, to be one of the contenders, but but, but, he, but he did not have the best car. The two best cars were Martin Truex Jr. and Carl Edwards, who combined I think led 165 laps out, out of the 334. So that's so that's about. Did I say 100, 165? 200, yeah, 265. Um, my bad, which is uh, over half of, of, of the race. So uh, they were so, they, so their cars were, 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 def, were dominant. But for Carl Edwards, it was uh, a loose wheel um, j just after uh, a restart uh, in the final 100 laps or so. And for Truex, uh, they they stayed out, and that ended up being a mistake as Kyle Busch made the pass on, on Truex on the final restart, uh, which was just simply another heartbreak for Martin Truex Jr. Uh, once again, it was actually a pretty slow week uh, in the NASCAR in the NASCAR community leading up to this race. There really was not really a whole lot for me to, to write out that caught my eye. Um, I think pro probably, uh, but there were two noticeable stories. In my opinion, one of them was that um, after this weekend, we don't know Brian Vickers' future future plans in NASCAR. He, uh, we don't know if he'll still be driving the 14 or not. He could uh, run the Indianapolis 500, um, and he actually also said, I also read an article somewhere that he'd also be up for the lines, but, we, but as of right now, as, as of this being, 
uh, record, recorded uh, Sunday a- afternoon here in Arizona. Uh, we, I, I do not, none of us know his future plans. Personally, I hope he can get uh, more chances in the 14 be, 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 because certainly I think he has uh, talent and speed to get uh, good finishes. Uh, but, 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 but we'll, we'll just see what happens. Uh, the other news story that, that came up in my mind that was talked about, I think, only once in the race, and that was early on in the race, was that the yellow is back on the forty on the forty eight car. Um, the forty eight uh, never had uh, w- was yellow from two thousand two to two thousand eleven, and uh, um, and it's back. And this is a, and this is a permanent change. And uh, at first, the car didn't look like like great in my opinion, but but, but under the lights. Uh, watching him, it, it really looked great. It brought back um, memories from, um, from many years ago. And speaking of uh, paint schemes, uh, there, there, we already have a couple of, uh, of throwback paint schemes. Uh, the first one I saw was uh, was, a, was, a, was a Regan Smith and Tommy about all of it racing. They're, they're apparently going to run uh, an Alan Kawicki uh, paint scheme, or, or paint scheme similar to what Alan Kawicki uh, had during, during, during his days. As a driver, um, and now let's get to the race weekend. Marjorie Kuchner was fastest in uh, the opening practice and the second practice, which was also happy hour. Uh, so, uh, so when I saw that, it was clear to me that he was going to have one of the best cars. Carl Edwards got his second pole at Texas Motor Speedway. He was followed by Logano, Truex, Chase Elliott, Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., Danny Hill, and Ryan, not Ryan Newman, Ryan Blaney, Matt Kozlowski, Matt Kenseth, Austin Dillon, Jimmy Johnson, and Trevor Bain. Uh, um, and, and so uh, it looked like Carl Edwards was also going to have a, a, fast, a fast card based on his, his practice times. Um, and uh, Rain did uh, did hit the racetrack uh, earlier that day, like I, like I believe I said earlier uh, in this video. And so uh, and so with all, all the rubber washed away from the track, tires were, were, were going to wear even quicker. No rubber. On the track, uh, more slipping and sliding. So I thought, based on that, it was going to be uh, uh, a better race, but it turns out it, it didn't. It didn't really make the racing better, in my opinion. Uh, uh, and then Chase Elliott, uh, despite his impressive start, went to the rear of the field because of because the team train changed a transmission. Uh, so, um, so so it was going to be a long night for Chase Elliott. And and then uh, the rain delay uh, actually. Actually ended up being longer than I thought. I thought we were actually going to uh, start the race maybe about 20, 30 minutes after the, after the scheduled start, but it turns out it was actually almost two hours. Um, so, so I think like they said, like they were having like problems, like like the track was like driving like slower, and that might be due to the cooler the cooler temperatures, but also uh, the weepers at Texas, which Texas has had weeper problems pretty much since it's since it's been around. Anyway, that's pretty much all the previous notes that I recorded. One thing that I did like about the race was how the flow of the race changed uh, throughout the race. Like, for example, we started out um, anticlimactic with a green yellow star, which I not really, which I'm not really becoming a fan of at all because 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 either the track is dry or or, or it is or, or it isn't, you know, and the kind and, and the kind of just feel like a, a waste of time in my opinion. Uh, but after that, we, we, had, we had a great flag run, a last one collapse, and then the competition caution, which was supposed to be on lap uh, 25, got, got extended to lap 28. We had that caution, and then after that, uh, the race began looking a lot like a land, a super long great flag run, over 100 laps. Uh, and then we had and then we had a great caution in turn before, unfortunately Fox didn't show us. After that, another... Uh, you, you could call it. You could say it was a great run. It lasted about seventy laps, um, and, and then I, after that we had a caution for, for Josh Wise, uh, pounding the wall very hard in uh, turn turns three and four. Then after that, another longer effect run lasted over fifty laps, um, and 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 then we had to bring it on the front stretch, which which once again was not shown by Fox, but uh, but, but but someone did take but someone did. Take, Someone did take a picture of it on on Twitter, uh, but but then after that things started getting uh, very uh, very crazy. Um, 
and, and the restarts are obviously the intensity of the restarts we got a lot more exciting as well as we saw a lot more three and four wide moves happening on the restarts uh after after that d after that debris caution our next replay run it was very short as Casey K and Greg Biffle made contact. Greg, Greg Biffle overcorrected it and went hard into the wall uh, in turns one two. After that, another restart, and this one didn't even make. And we didn't even make it two full laps uh, as we had a huge wreck, w w w which I'll, which I'll get to later. Um, but after that wreck, we went green the rest of the way in the final three few laps. So, um, so, so, so very interesting how, how the race started out anticlimactic. Uh, and then we had long drag runs from like the beginning, middle, kind of closing stages of the race. Then all of a sudden we started getting a whole bunch of caution. Then also we started getting quite a bit of cautions, and then and then we and then we ended on, um, and then we ended on a a, a long drag like run or a sort of long drag like run. I guess that's more fitting to say. Pit road mishaps uh, were were common in the early. Uh, in the early uh, parts of the race, for example, uh, on the first um, on the first cycle of stops uh, after the competition caution, uh, Kevin Harvick, uh, as Howard pulled out, was good stop. Kyle Busch had to slow down, and Johnson uh, couldn't get slowed down in time. Him and Kyle Busch made uh, it wasn't like heavy contact, but, but it was contact, and I think it actually really messed up uh, Johnson's car to the point of where uh, of where his car. I think it went from a car that could have won the race to now a car that best can get like uh, like a top five, top ten finish in my opinion. Um, and I think Kyle Busch, uh, I think it definitely slowed down Kyle Busch's car early in the race, but really wasn't able to overcome, and he obviously won the race. Uh, um, and then and, and then during and then during the cycle of the stops, I think like Ryan Blaney had like two like loose like like loose wheels um, in the race, and that caused him to to finish like what. Yeah, he, he finished 29th. Rakazowski, I thought Kazowski was actually going to have one of the past, one of the past cars that could have won the race, uh, but 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 he, um, but, but he also uh, came down for, for loose wheel. Um, Brian Vickers uh, had to serve a, a commitment a commitment line violation on the first cycle. No, it wasn't the first cycle. The second cycle of your could stops, and what happened was. Uh, as he was coming up the road, uh, he he, ha he was trying to avoid hitting the slower uh, car of Clint Boyer, and he ended up spinning the car, uh, knocking down the cone, and that and that is a commitment line violation. Uh, Paul Menard ha had to make a, a pit stop uh, because the team, I guess, messed messed with the side skirts too much to not uh, liking, and. Um, and, and so overall, a lot of um, mishaps and, uh, and mistakes on pit road, and I think it really uh, cost some drivers like uh, like Brian Vickers, like Brian Kozowski, like like Brian Blaine to all get good finishes. A mysterious incident that occurred uh, somewhere during during like the midpoint of the race was. Uh, tr was NASCAR trying to figure out where, where Jimmy Johnson was uh, on the racetrack. And the way I can best remember it is, so basically uh, we had a cycle of green flag pit stops at around, I, I think it was around the, the 200 lap mark. Okay. Uh, green flag pit stops happened in lap 210. Then the caution came out one lap later, uh, and, there, and there was the caution... And the caution was for Josh Pies pounding the wall in turn state four, and because this was during the middle of your like pit stops, um, this is the rule: when the caution comes out, if you if you're on pit road when the caution comes out during your like pit stops, you must be the leader to the start finish line, and the start finish line goes all the way from from the outside wall to the inside wall uh, on pit road, uh, and apparently. Um, and Matt Kenseth beat it, so 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 he so he became the last driver on the only lap. Jimmy Johnson did not beat Martrix Jr. to to that line, uh, and so because of that, they were um, they fell a lap down. But apparently, the 48 team th thought they were supposed to be on the lead lap, uh, and then there was also some additional confusion on, confusion on whether Johnson would be in the free pass position or, or the way around. Um, 
and but, but it turns out the free pass position was Dale Earnhardt Jr., who, who, had, who had already had made a piss up about a lap before the caution came out, and Johnson had to take the wave around. I, I don't quite remember like the full discussion, um, but but that's that's the best way. I, that's the best I can on on explaining the situation. Uh, we had, we ended up spending extra laps on, under caution trying to figure out this whole the, um, this whole mess that hopefully we don't see. Uh, hopefully we don't see a lot of this in the future. While the 18 team played the perfect strategy, the boldest strategy of the race goes to the six team and Trevor Bain drives the six car. Um, dur dur during during the we had green flag pit stops at around lap two uh, around lap two hundred and fifty six, uh, and Trevor Bain was about eighth, ha ha having a very impressive run for him and that team uh, before the before the cycle of green flag pit stops, and, and and all of a sudden, um, and, and all of a sudden they decided to stay to stay out, um, and w what was happening throughout the race was. Uh, because was because tires meant, meant so much. Um, the teams were actually pitting for tires instead of for, for fuel. What Charbonne decided, what Charbonne and that team decided to go the opposite way and, and stay out for, for as long as they can can of uh, fuel. And 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 so Charbonne got the lead at around lap two hundred and fifty eight, I believe. Uh, and I, and as the laps kept on chugging along, and he was still leading. I kept on wondering. I kept on wondering to myself, what, what, are, what is that six team doing? Because at the time, it felt like that they were just like screwing themselves to have a good finish by, by, by staying out. Because I thought, well, well, now because they're staying out for so long, now in the pit they're going to they're going to definitely be a lap down. Um, but um, but later on, I realized, uh, wait a second, this could actually this could actually work because because the turbine gets a caution just 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 before they have to pit. Um, it's gonna trap a, a lot of cars a, a, a lot down, and, and when he and when he restarts, he'll actually be restarting high up high to the field. Plus, plus, what does this team have to lose? You know, they weren't going to win the race anyway based on, on their speed. Um, and and I, and I think uh, the chase format, the current chase format, uh, encourages drivers to take big, big risks, and it is one of the things that I like with the chase format. Uh, and this is coming from someone who hates the chase. Uh, um, so, uh, I, so, so, so I think it was definitely a very bold strategy that, uh, almost paid off. And I say almost because, um, because, because Trevor Bain got passed, uh, on lap 270 after leading about 12 laps. How many laps did he lead? He, yeah, 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 he led 12 laps. Uh, um, and then a few laps later, he came on the road. And then a few laps after that, the fifth caution came out for debris, and thus, and thus, even though he, thus, even though it got, it got, it got in the way around, um, it put him, it, it would put him in the back of the field, and then, and then he would get caught, and get, and then he would get some damage in that multi car crash not too long later. So, uh, it almost paid off. Uh, um, I, I wish it could have paid off because who knows? It could have, it could have been a, a really good top five, top ten. Um, who knows? Uh, but, but, but overall. It, it was nice to see a new face up front for multiple laps, uh, and, and I think it's good for Avocare as well because I think it's, it got them uh, a lot, a lot of exposure being being in front. So um, I think so, 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 so I think I, I, there were definitely some some positives out, out of this bold out of this bold strategy that I think the Charbonne and Six Team can look at and it might uh, give them some, some confidence and they might uh, maybe do more of this strategy. Or, or, or better yet, maybe even, or better, or better yet, maybe finally start r running well and gain like top of teams and top tens. So now the part that I'm sure many have been waiting for, and that is me dissecting uh, the multi car crash that also happened to be the final caution just before the lap, just before the 300 lap mark. So uh, to give you an analysis of what, what happened before it, uh, uh, after the Greg Biffle caution, uh, we saw some very interesting strategies. Uh, Shrek's Jr. And Austin Dillon stayed out. Chase Elliott was the only driver who took two tires. Everyone else took four tires. And on the restart, Truex pulled ahead and Chase Elliott followed it in his tracks. Uh, Austin Dillon slipped back to fifth place. Um, and uh, and what I was watching for is Chase Elliott because it looked like that 
uh, he might actually be, uh, he might actually get the lead from from Artrix Jr. because um, it looked like his car was faster. Uh, and so as this was happening, I was looking at Chase Elliott, but uh, uh, and I didn't see what happened behind him until this shot right here. Austin Dillon gets sideways, hits the wall. Ryan from Ricky Stiles Jr. And all of a sudden, we see a big crash. Everything was happening so fast that it was kind of hard to comprehend. But it was a huge crash. All three RCR cars got got involved uh, in the me in the melee. It was just a huge mess. Biggest crash in Texas, I think, in any of the three series since the April 2010 race in the Cup Series, which had a huge wreck also late in the race in that one. Um, now let's cut right here to the replay. So Austin Dillon was in the fifth spot, and on those, and on those older tires, he was pretty much a sitting duck. And right here, as Hamlin approached him, they didn't make contact. Austin Dillon just got air loose. But it, but it came up in front of Johnson, who, who they did make contact. Austin Dillon got even more sideways into the wall. Ryan from Ryan from Ricky Stouts Jr. Both drivers were having uh, good runs, and then behind them, as drivers were trying to check up, some didn't get uh, the message, and ended up creating a, uh, a chain reaction behind them. So right here, um, it's not the best quality, but but, but you can see it at the didn't make contact, and uh, I, I got applied. I got to go shout to Johnson for, for the incredible save he made because that because that could have gone. Could have uh, went, went ugly. Trevor Bain ran into the back of Matt Kenseth, and you see Clint Boyer in, in, involved. Uh, Michael Nett also got the damage. Brian Scott almost ha had it cleared. Uh, Regan Smith got, got damage. Anyone else who I didn't mention? Well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll have the full list of everyone involved right now on the screen. I don't have the time to explain them all, but here are some quick notes that you may not have recognized. So that's pretty much everything I have to say about Texas. And now we get to look ahead to Bristol, which um, Bristol, Bristol, I think, is currently a very polarizing track because some people really do not like Bristol's current configuration and wish that it was the 1992-2007 configuration. Some people don't mind Bristol. Some people think some people think that Bristol still puts on one of the best races of the season. I wish it was still in its 1992-2007 configuration, and this is coming from someone who never watched a race live under that configuration. I I, I became a fan one two one year one year too late for, for to see that. Um, but overall, I think, but I, I think we could be in for a really good race. Uh, it, it looks like, and when, when I last saw the forecast, it, it looks like that we're not going to have to deal with, with rain, which has plagued the spring race the last two years. Um, and, and, and actually, uh, in a way, because of the rain washing away a lot of the rubber, I think it actually kind of made the rest of the races, in my opinion, a little bit more action-packed. Uh, but we'll, we'll just see what happens this time. I also think that uh, because Bristol speeds are high and because it's multiple grooves, uh, uh, we are going to see the little hours package in action. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference, but, but I could be wrong. It could make a great difference in the racing. Um, who, who do I think uh, is going to run good there? Well, um, Kyle Busch is on a hot streak, and Bristol is one of his best racetracks. He has the second best average for finish. Uh, uh, first place is, is Ricky Stout Studer, but he, he's only run at Bristol six times. Kyle Busch has run at Bristol in the Cup Series 21 times. It doesn't matter what, what, what configuration Bristol is, it's just simply one of, the, one of those best tracks, uh, period. And, I, and so I think, since I think it's to say that they, they, he's going to run well there. Uh, I mentioned Ricky Stout Studer. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I'm, I think he actually could be a good dark respect. For the win, you know he's run good there, there in the past. I think it is one, one of the best tracks, and because he has performed better this year, it, it, um, this, this this is kind of weekend might be um, the race where he gets it, where he gets his first career cup win. There, I think I think there's a good chance. I think there's a, a a decent chance for that. But outside of those two, um, it could be the way where Mike Hansen finally breaks his bad luck streak of a win. You know, he, he did snap a 51 race win the streak uh, in in the, in the April race last year. Uh, it could be a, a race where it could be a race where someone like where someone like Casey Kane 
uh, finally gets a, a really good performance. Um, oh, overall, I think um, I, I think we could see a playing field, the playing field be uh, evened out a, a, a little bit more. Um, it, it's possible. Um, but overall, that's pretty much everything I have to say. So I would like to thank you all for watching this first review. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and bye.